any better, Borden? This isn't a battle, it's a slaughter. Our men didn't have a chance. They never had, you hear me? Steady there, boy, steady But now. you don't understand. We planned a surprise attack, didn't we? And yet we were the ones surprised. Our men walked into a deliberate trap. The Germans knew our objective and our zero hour exactly. Well, I'd better call up headquarters. Major Andrews speaking. This is Captain Stewart, 28th Division. Our attack has been repulsed along the entire sector, sir. I have to report a complete failure. Send in your casualty report. Captain Stewart reports, sir, that the 28th was beaten back too. The Germans must have known of our plans before our own junior officers. Captain Lamb. Everything that's done here, all our orders, our entire line of campaign, they're known immediately to the enemy. For the last year, every time one of our plans has miscarried, it's been blamed on Strindler. Well, he must be caught. But, sir, we're not exactly certain what he looks like. But we do expect some results very soon. And until then, we are supposed to let the Germans go on learning anything and everything they please. If you'll permit me, sir, what about Williams? He's the best spy we have. But he's the keystone of our whole system in Germany. We can't afford to bring him back here. We must bring him back. It's well known that Strendler is working in this vicinity. Obviously, we shall need our shrewdest operator to catch him. Williams is the man for the job. Notify Williams immediately. Yes, sir. Uh, Major Andrews, instruct Commander Phelps to have a pilot stand by to pick up Williams from behind the German lines. Very good, sir. Uh, Bennett. Williams will be waiting for you at the north edge of the woods, outside Bamorel at nine o'clock. He'll be wearing a white smock so that you can identify him from the air. Understand? Uh, yes, sir. Good luck. Thank you, sir. Cheerio, Phelps. Good night, Major. Back to headquarters. Good luck to your trip. Thank you, sir. A jolly little assignment, isn't it? Not an ounce of trouble. Are you sure you want to do it, Bennett? Of course, sir. For democracy and all that, you know. Very well, you push off before dawn tomorrow. You follow the railroad tracks up the Selva Valley. That'll put you above Barmorel at 9 o'clock. Right you are, sir. Good luck. Notify the air circus that we have work tomorrow at dawn. What happened?
he hasn't a blinking chance in the world. I wonder where Look at him flip-flopping there. Make sure the letter to your mother is posted before I leave. Let me see now. This is Arthur Bennett, 30 Cumberland Terrace, London. Please, don't go away, Helena. I've got to, Frank. You've got to go to sleep. Come on now, close your eyes. But won't you come back? No. Why, Helena? I can't explain. Keep your eyes closed. You know, Helen, I think I'm falling in love with you. I'm afraid you're talking yourself into something. Try and go to sleep, please. for your past services to the Vaterland, and because of the success of your mission at the English base hospital at Morney, His Imperial Majesty has ordered me to confer upon you this decoration. This, my Fräulein, is a most distinguished honor. I am very grateful. You have studied these directions? Yes, Excellency. Repeat them. I will proceed to Kiel and report to the commander of submarine U-53. He will conduct me to the North Irish coast. From there, I will make my way to Liverpool to Henry Thompson, who will take care of the London end. Good. Herr Kapitän, destroy the directions. Very schön, Herr Bitte setzen Sie sich. Henry Thompson is highly esteemed by the British officials. He should have no difficulty, nor arouse any suspicion in placing you on the Arthur Bennett home. Arthur Bennett? Yes. Anything wrong? No, certainly not, Excellency. It's just that you startled me with the name of the new cabinet minister. While in London, you will take your orders directly or indirectly, whichever he may choose, from Franz Strendler. Strendler? Fräulein questions this? Oh, no. It's just that I thought that he was in France. Strendler is in London, has been for several months. The British would give an entire army corps to capture him. And all the while, he's under the so high noses, constantly communicating with us by wireless to say Brugge. I feel very proud, Herr Baron. I'm honored to be chosen to work with Strendler. May I ask, Excellency, what is my objective in this mission? The objective is to deal a death blow to the Allies. Aside from Strandler, that's all any of us know. There is a new password. Yes, Herr Baron? Immer vorwärts. Immer vorwärts. Always forward. The answer? Niemals zurück. Niemals zurück. Never backward. Victory must be ours. We have but one objective. To win the war. Even if we have to fight the entire world. No nation, no group of nations can stop our advance and the advance of German culture. We are destined to conquer the world. If our Kaiser is taken from us, a new leader will arise. I may not live to see it, but someday, someday, Germany will own the world.
Mr. Strandler should be pleased with you are placing me in the Bennett home. You've arranged things very cleverly, Mr. Thompson. Oh, it wasn't a very difficult assignment. No one suspects me in the slightest. But how did you convince the Bennetts that I should be in their home? By telling them the very sad story of Frances Hawtrey. About her poor old father and her terrible hardships and her amazing escape from those German brutes. By the time I'd finished, I had old Bennett on the verge of tears. Henry Thompson, aside from myself, you're the nicest spy I know. Thank you. Now, in the Bennett home, in addition to Mr. and Mrs. Bennett, there's a brother, George, and a daughter, Dorothy. Wasn't... wasn't there a son? Yes. Frank, I think his name is, but uh, he's in France now, in the Air Force. Oh, we shall be there in a moment. Nervous? No, not at all. Well, I do hope you'll be happy here. I'm sure I will. You've been so kind. Just wait, will you? Oui, monsieur. Miss Hawtrey and Mr. Thompson to see Mr. Bennett. But of course, monsieur, mademoiselle. Please to come in. This way, please. Permit me, monsieur. Thank you. You are expected by monsieur Bennett. Hello, Thompson. Hello, I thought I heard your voice. Mr. Bennett, George, may I present Miss Frances Hawtrey? How do you do? We've been expecting you. Oh, Valor, will you tell Mrs. Bennett that our guests have arrived? At once, monsieur. Shall we go into the library? Oh, won't you sit down, Miss Hawtrey? Mr. Thompson. Thanks. We're so glad you were able to come to us. We hope you'll be very happy here. Thank you. I understand you've had quite a time but in Germany. George. It's all right, really. I don't mind talking about it. I think this is wonderfully kind of you, Bennett. Not at all. Sorry. As I told you, Miss Hawtrey and her father were interned in Germany from the very beginning of the war. And they were treated like cattle. It wasn't so bad, really, until my father was accused of being an English spy. They didn't bother to say how or what he could have spied upon. They condemned him to death anyway. On July 14th, at 8 o'clock in the morning, I saw my father dragged from his cell and shot. Oh, dear. This is Miss Frances Hawtrey. Miss Hawtrey, my wife. How do you do? Oh, welcome, my dear. Thank you so much. And our daughter, Dorothy. I'm very happy to know you. You'll be a welcome addition to our family. I'll have your things sent up to your room right away. Oh, they're still at the Savoy. You see, I couldn't convince Miss Hawtrey that she'd be really welcome. But I'm sure she understands now, don't you? I do. Valda. May we, madame? Miss Hawtrey's luggage is at the Savoy. See that it's brought here. At once, madame. Vive l'Amérique! May we help my poor country. Hey, Monsieur Bennett? Yes, madame. Only I could march with them, fight with them. Oh, pardon, monsieur. Valdor's case is very tragic. That bayonet wound in his cheek. He, a civilian, got that and two bullets in his leg from the Germans. His wife and baby were murdered before his eyes. Colonel Yates heard about Valdor's case asked me to help him by giving him this job. I've never regretted it. Oh, they're, they're certainly a fine bunch of fellows. Sad to watch them. More food for German guns. God grant they will be the last. My dear, you're quite exhausted. Let me take you to your room. Mr. Bennett, I'm so grateful. 
Thompson, I, I shan't see you again? No. But I shall write to you and let you know how things are going in America. Well, good luck. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. I'll see you at dinner. Well, I must run along. My trunks aren't packed yet and the boat train leaves at seven. Well, have a good trip, Thompson. Thank you, I shall. And good luck to you both. Thanks a lot. Look after Miss Hawtrey. Fine man, Thompson. Mademoiselle, I take so long. Not at all. If Mademoiselle will permit, I am very happy she stay here. Thanks. Something else? Uh, some sandwich, perhaps? No, thank you. Very good. Baldar. Maybe, Mademoiselle. Mr. Bennett was telling me that you too are a victim of German cruelty. Ah, mademoiselle. When I think what they have done to my country, my wife, my baby, I... You certainly have every right to feel bitter, but... don't you think that there might be people in Germany who feel equally bitter toward the Allies? Toward us? We do not kill women and babies. No, but... the Germans might feel that anything warrants victory. Mademoiselle should need anything. You have only to push the bell at this table. I will come at once. Oh, and if Mademoiselle will remember always to push the bell with a forward motion, it will be more easy. It is somewhat stuck. Please to remember, always forward. Always forward, did you say? Oui, Mademoiselle. Odd sort of a bell, isn't it? No. Mademoiselle perhaps has had experience with a bell that works some other way? No, never any other way. Never backward. L.A. von Lobia. And you? Karl Schiller, servant of the Fatherland. Baron Kugler told me of you. It would be well if Baron Kugler I told you not to show sympathy for Germany as you did with me just now. You're right. Even when we talk like this, always I remain Valgar, the servant. The only way to be someone you are not is to be that person always, even in the presence of friends. But tell me, Schiller. Valdar. Valdar. When may I meet Franz Strindler? That I cannot answer. But, but where is he? I do not know. He trusts no one. My orders are received and my reports sent by another who will transmit them to Strindler. But I'm so anxious to meet him. His work, his methods, a genius. No. A symbol of blind duty. Or a complete patriot. Perhaps. But he has no soul, no conscience, nothing. He'd kill you or me for duty. Merci, monsieur. Merci. You are expected by Monsieur Bennett in the library. Hello, Yates. You're right on time. These have all been checked. Better put them in a safe. Crichton, will you pick them up in the morning? Take them to the war office vaults? Certainly, Colonel Yates. safely? Without a hitch. Not stored close to any other munitions depot, are they? No, sir. There's too great a concentration to take any chances. Oh, sir. Baldar. Oui, mademoiselle. The 
heel on my shoe seems to be loose. I wonder if you'll fix it for me. But of course, mademoiselle. You didn't tell me what my duties are. You will visit the office of Bennett at least twice a week. There you will find his secretary, Miss Riston. She and Kurtz are handle Coast Patrol information. I don't know Kurtz. You will. You are familiar with Wolfgang Telegraphic Code? Perfectly. Deutschland über alles. Good. As a rule, there are people in Bennett's office. So in case it is not empty, Miss Riston will click off the information on the keys of her typewriter. I understand. I may have work for you tonight. Colonel Yates, head of the British Intelligence Department, is in the library with Monsieur Bennett. I think that will all now. And dinner will be served at eight precise. Thank you. Bonjour, monsieur. We have one quart extra today. All right, sir. Fräulein Helene arrive. Oui. This afternoon. Ah, that is good. Is there any further information about the Murs offensive? So far, nothing. Ah, we must know the exact location of the Murs munition dumps. I think I have that for you tonight. Good. What are you doing down here at this time of night? I came after a book. I couldn't sleep. I just can't realize that, that I'm free. I understand. But you'd better run along upstairs, or you'll catch cold. I'm, I'm so tired, I, I just can't rest. You must try. You'll be yourself again in a few days. Good night, my dear. Good night. What is it? I'm so sorry. I guess I am exhausted. I'll be all right now. You poor child. Come along. I'll take you upstairs. Oh, that isn't necessary. Really, it isn't. No, no, no. No more arguments. Very kind of you.
Evening, Governor. Good evening, Monsieur. Nice night, ain't it? Oui, Monsieur. It is a very nice night. Good night, Governor. Plenty. We have a copy of the latest English plans. Come on, start the generators. Yo. Yeah. to a wide advance, the Allies have concentrated large stores of munitions at Pont Noir. That were to all air drops. That munition stock must be destroyed. We will, General. Good Mr. George is with him now, and then this gentleman has an appointment. Oh, perhaps I'd better run along then. Why don't you wait a moment? I'll see if we can squeeze you in. You'll find the latest magazines on the table. Thank you. Beg pardon, Mr. Bennett. Your afternoon paper, sir. And Miss Hawtrey is outside. Oh, ask her to wait, will you please? Yes. Hello. George, listen to this. Can you believe that even one person survived among the 740 aboard the ill-fated steamship Victoria was dispelled today? Authorities hold that the ship must have been torpedoed without warning by a German submarine. This would account... What a fearful thing. Poor Thompson. He told me before he boarded the Victoria that... he didn't feel right about the trip. England's lost a good man in Thompson. So they say. George, did Thompson ever strike you as being a very rich man? No, I should say comfortable, but certainly not rich. So he appeared to me. His books show him to have been immensely wealthy. Oh? Wealth mostly acquired within the past 12 months. You don't say. That's strange. Mr. Arthur Bennett's rooms. Miss Risden here. Oh, yes. Yes, Mr. Bennett's looking into that matter. About an hour ago, you say? Yes. They caught our man Kurtz at the Orient docks. Have the message relayed immediately. Very good, sir. I'll see that he gets word. Goodbye, sir.
Hello, my dear. Hello. How are you, Miss Hawtrey? Very well, thank you, Major. Goodbye. I'll see you later. I hope so. I'm so sorry to have kept you waiting. That's all right, Mr. Bennett. I've had an interesting time uh, reading. Excuse me. Can you stay a little while longer? Mr. Crichton's been here for some time. Oh, it isn't important. I was shopping near here, and I thought I'd stop in and say hello. I'll see you at home. All right, my dear. Goodbye. Bye. Can you come inside? Thank you. I beg your pardon. I'll gather them together. Oh, let me help. All ship shape. Excuse me? Certainly, Mr. Crichton. Well, you'll excuse my office being in this condition, Crichton. But I'm closing out my private law practice, you know. I'm trying to get out of here by the end of the week. Certainly. Here's something I just picked up. A lot of X's. What does it mean? It's a code message. That's the reason I stumbled over the wastebasket. Miss Risden, you mean? She's a German agent. But that's not possible. I can't believe such a thing. Just now, she was transmitting a message in the Wolfgang code through her typewriter keys. The German intelligence are the only ones using that system. Who else was in the office? Only Miss Hawtrey. Do you remember when I dropped in to see you earlier in the week? Yes. Miss Hawtrey was also in the office at that time. I thought I caught the end of a code message then. Now I'm sure. Risen to a... Eh? Tell me, Crichton. I realize we can't arrest either of them while there's any chance of them leading us to Strender. But is all this leading us any closer to Strender? Have you any news of him at all? We've positive proof that he's in London. How long he's been here, of course, we don't know. Excuse me. Yes. Put him on, please. How are you, Yates? Yes. Where? Well, yes, of course, immediately. Goodbye. Yates is at Bow Street Police Station. Wants us to come over there. Right up. I think we've hit on something. Brixton here picked up a man on the Orient Pier. A chap named Kurtz. How do you find out? Through Miss Risden, Mr. Bennett's secretary. She conveyed the information to Miss Hawtrey through a code message on the typewriter keys. She's in it too? That's an angle he overlooks it. What did you learn from this man Kurtz? Complete confirmation. You were right about Henry Thompson. He was the paymaster of the spy ring, got all his money from Germany. And Miss Hawtrey? Well, we'll find out tonight whether she's actually leading us anywhere. Crichton, at 9.30, you and two of your men will be at the front door of Mr. Bennett's home. Very well, sir. At a given signal, you'll be admitted. I'll be nearby to tell you what to do. Very likely to be an arrest to make. Right, you are, Chief. You understand your end of things, Brixton? Yes, sir. Then you intend placing Miss Hawtrey under arrest tonight? That depends entirely upon what happens. I'm afraid I don't quite understand. First you're going to arrest her, then you're not. I do. If Thompson hadn't gone down with the Victoria, we might have been able to clear things up. But as it is, Thompson's not dead. He didn't even sail on the Victoria. What? What was that? Brixton here was covering the Victoria departure, purely as a matter of routine. He saw Thompson board the vessel right enough, but he also saw him leaving the pier after the vessel had sailed. That's when we began our investigation of him. Thompson is still in England. I'm certain of that. Yes? You sent for me, monsieur? I sent for you. Oui, monsieur. At your service. See you at the one office at 8.30. Right now, sir. You two, Crichton. That's all. Yes, sir. Bye, Miss Bennett. Bye. How did that lead of mine work out? Splendid. We picked up that man Kurtz this afternoon. He's in back now. 
Any information? None. He swears he never heard of Miss Hawtrey. Nonsense. He's lying. I'm certain they've been in touch with each other. Let me talk. That won't be necessary. I'm satisfied he's a German agent. Of course he is. Something about every one of those slimy dogs that gives them away. It's... it's unmistakable. How important is Kurtz to us? Only in so far as he helps us towards Trendler. The same for Miss Hawtrey. That's right. Franz Trendler is the man we've got to catch. Get Trendler, and I'll guarantee to round up every German agent this side of the Western Front within a week. It's taken a long time. But I think we're finally closing in. We'll get Trendler soon. We've got to catch him, Colonel Yates. In the meantime, there are matters of equal importance to arrange. Tomorrow night, the Cabinet holds a meeting secretly in Mr. Bennett's home. My men will guard the outside. I expect you to keep a close watch inside. Understand? Perfectly. That's all then. Thank you, sir. Oh, you hold the meeting in the library, monsieur? Yes. Very good, monsieur. signal will be given at 9.30 exactly. Come with me. Now, you got everything straight? Yes, sir. Do exactly as I said. When I get to the door and give the signal, start. Yes, sir. Come here, you. All right, you two with me. Me to have to meet, they're going to kill me. Oh, who's going to kill you? Who are you? Of course, out of court. You know, you heard of me. Strendler must have told you, but there isn't any time to lose. Please hide me. Strendler? Who's Strendler? Francis, open the door. Don't give me up. Always forward, never backward. Francis? Yes? Just a moment. In here, quickly. Open the door, quickly, please. All right, all right, I'm coming. Elizabeth, what's wrong with you? Did you see anybody? Did he come in here? Why, who? A man named Kurtz, a German spy. He escaped while being transferred to the tower. I heard a lot of shooting and, and whistles. Is that all? Yes, I, I believe so. It was an awful racket. Sorry to have disturbed you, Miss Hawtrey. That's all. Right you are, sir. Uh, Colonel Yates. Yes? You are of the British Intelligence Department. Yes? I should think that you would at least insist on looking in the closet. I beg your pardon. When I catch someone, he stays caught. In there. You will need the key. Why didn't you tell us this in the first place? He said that he was accused of being a traitor and that... He could explain everything if I'd only conceal him. It must seem so genuine. Come out. Come on. You... You could have saved me. They were going. They would have never found me. Take him along, Crichton. Come along. You know, Miss Hawtrey, it's always best to report such cases at once. I should have known that. I'm sorry. Thank you for your cooperation. Good night. I'm terribly sorry. Coming, Benny? Good night, Francis. Good night. Why you give him off? That wasn't Kurtz. But how did you know? You have never seen him. Don't you see? It's obviously a trick. It means only one thing. They suspect me. 
They have no evidence, or they would not set this trap. They can arrest me on suspicion. I've got to get away from here. It is imperative, mademoiselle, that you stay here till tomorrow night. But why? The British cabinet will come here for a secret meeting. Strandler will see they never leave. How? That we will learn from Strandler. He will be here himself. But you learn... And that will be all, mademoiselle. I still don't think we've failed completely. The cabinet meeting? Yes, we'll make certain then. And I rather expect an air raid at the same time. I've been hiding for three days, but I just had to come here and warn you. About what? Well, since you arrived in London, every word you've spoken, everything you've done, they've all been reported to Scotland Yard. What? By whom? Alda. Well, that can't be. But I tell you, he was with Yates and Bennett this afternoon. He's working with the English. It's impossible. But it's not impossible. I know it to be true. But, but only tonight he told me of Strendler's final plan. I don't care what he told you. We're both in terrible danger, Helene. I'm getting out. Well, I want you to come with me. No, I can't go. Well, there's nothing to be gained here. You have no ties, neither have I. Well, let's go together to somewhere peaceful, where there's no war. I appreciate what you say. And I know the risk you took to tell me this. But I can't leave now. Okay. Think a moment. People work so they may live. What good is work such as ours when it leads only to death? It's, it's for Germany. It's for Germany. I'm sick of that phrase. How many millions of people have been killed in the past for those words? How many millions more must die just because one man sets himself above the Almighty so that he may boast of my country, my people? It's happened before. It's happening now. It will happen again. Oh, Elaine, let's get out before it's too late. You can't mean these things. You can't. I'm sailing for South America tonight. And I want you to come with me, Elaine. Good luck. This is final. I'll feed a skin for a night. Hello there, mate. Want a ride? Merci, monsieur. My leg is bad tonight. Come on, Henry. Well, what's happening? A great deal is happening, monsieur. Who is it? It's me, Thompson, your old friend, the milkman. Someplace? Why, yes, you. You told me to. That's right. But that was three days ago, wasn't it? Yes, but I. I was delayed. But I'm going now. Oh, you don't say. Where to? Why, to Germany, of course. Oh, of course. But I think I'd better see that you go there this time. Maybe it'd be a good idea if we left together, eh? Yes. I'm glad you agree. Pick up your bag, stop snow, friend.
Talk as much as I have in the last two years. Oh, pardon, monsieur. That's all right. Well, who would you be? I am Valdar. And may I ask, who is monsieur? Oh, that. Oh, I live here. What little living there is to do these days. Uh, Bennett's the name, friend. Frank Bennett. Oh, monsieur, me pardon. Oh, I'm so sorry. Permit me. Uh, where is everybody? Upstairs, monsieur. Oh, thanks. Yes. Mother. Frank. Oh, Frank. Frank, my boy, my boy, let me look at you. How are you? Oh, fine, Mother. If you overlook a couple of ribs I left in France. Oh, Dad. Dad, I'm glad to see you. Frank, we're happy to have you home again. How are you? <laughs> Never better. Good. But what are you doing in England? Well, our whole squadron was ordered over here this morning on the double. More than 100 planes were called back. Most of us flew in together from our stand. That's rather strange. None of us knows the reason. Oh, by the way, I've got to call the war office immediately. You'll let us know what they say. Uh, I will, Mother. Uh, Whitehall 940, please. Uh, will you put me through to Major Andrews, please? Hello, Major Andrews. This is Bennett speaking. Yes, sir. All right, sir, I'll stand by. Yes? Thank you, sir. I say, you must be Miss Hawtrey, the girl mother wrote me about. Yes, I am. I'm Frank Bennett. I'm awfully glad to know you. Thank you. I've seen you before. No, I, I don't think so. I think I have. Wait a minute. Weren't you at the field hospital in Mornay? I'm, I'm afraid you're mistaken. Mother told me you escaped from a German internment camp, but... That's correct. Look here, do you mind very much telling me the truth? You already know my history. No, you're no more Francis Hawtrey than I am. Who are you? Well, you seem to know everything else, why don't you tell me? Your name is Helen, that I do know. You were the girl who nursed me back to the living after I cracked up. That's wrong. No, it's not. I tried to trace you. I heard you've been captured in the German advance. You're making a complete liar out of me, aren't you? Call it that if you like, but I can't understand after what you did at Mornay. Don't you remember the last time I saw you? When I was able to speak for the first time? I, I tell you, I'm mistaken. No. Really, I, I wish you'd stop. You are Helen. Yes. I... I did know you at Monet. I knew it. Wait. Soldiers often fall in love with their nurses. It's contagious, I guess. But they get over it as soon as they leave the hospital. Not this soldier and this nurse. You're being very silly. Am I? When you thought I was asleep, you kissed me. Do you remember? Then... Then you weren't asleep? I tried to call you back. I couldn't raise my voice above a whisper. That was the night you disappeared. Helen. What are you doing here? I... I'm a British Secret Service agent. Even your father doesn't know. But why? I can't say anything more now. Believe me, I would... Pardon, mademoiselle, but Madame Dorothy is asked for you upstairs. here for the meeting? Oh, yes. Lord Sudbury. This way, your lordship. Hello, Sudbury. Hello. Sit down. Well, that's the last of them. All the ministers are here, monsieur. Yes. Keeping track of the poultry girl, right? Oui, monsieur. 
Sure it wouldn't be better to arrest her immediately? No, please. Give me two more hours. Then I know all I need to know. Oh, good evening, Miss Hardray. Good evening. Hello, Hello. Bennett. Sure, shall we go inside? You'll excuse us, Francis. Frank's home. He wanted very much to see you, but he was called back to the war office about an hour ago. I can understand that. Have you anything to tell me? No. Nothing new has developed. You are sure of that? Yes. Air raid alarm. That means in five minutes, all electric power will be shut off. When will Strindler be here? Soon, Mademoiselle. Very soon. Then I'm to meet him? That was not the plan. I think maybe you had better come with me. Oh, Baldar, if you only could, if you'd only arrange it. I will, mademoiselle. But turn round, please, and go down into the cellar. And I'd advise you to make no sign. If you please. Now, my dear Fräulein von Lobier, who are you? My congratulations. I might have known you were a British agent all the time. I asked you a question. Who are you? Helene von Lorbeer, a servant of the Fatherland. I see. Where did you meet the Bennett boy? I have nothing to say. And I heard you in the library when you told him you were a member of the English Secret Service. What would you have me do? Tell him I'm a German spy, Mr. Beldar? Excellent. But I'm afraid it won't quite do. No, I suppose it won't. You've caught me all right. Do you know what it means? Nothing. You may trap every German agent in England, one by one. But they'll replace us just as rapidly. Franz Strindler will see to that. And you'll never take him. Gott strafe England. Very, very good. Have you anything else to say? In case you're still in doubt. Fräulein Elaine, my deepest regrets. Prince Strendler is wrong. He admits it. You are Franz Strendler? Exactly. They have sighted our Zeppelin. Approximately three minutes, this house and the entire British cabinet will be destroyed. And the plans for the spring offensive will be on their way across the channel. Colonel Gates, dull as I am, man, sir, he just told Miss Hotry that he's Trendler. Up the stairs. Barely time to get away. Very quickly, the coal chute. Alfred Bennett. She's the best agent we have. Cover the front door. Yes, sir. The coal bin, sir. He must be still here in the garden. Quickly, man, we'll search the grounds. There he goes. There he goes, man. Thank you. 
lost his throat. Stop those generators coming. Hurry. They're getting along famously, aren't they, Benny? Yes, they are. He's a fine boy. And Helen, well, she is a remarkable girl. I wish I'd known more about her from the start, though. I'd have felt far more comfortable. Sorry I had to keep you in the dark, but with Strandler's the prize, that's the way it had to be. No one else knew? No one. When I gave her the assignment, I told her to play her part, regardless of cost. There were occasions such as the stolen plans when the cost was heavy. There were times such as the night we set the bogus trap for Helen, when we almost overplayed our parts, trying to be too clever. But it worked out all right in the end. We had to get Strandler, and we got him. But tell me, Yates, these sacrifices we are all making, do you think they will eventually mean something to mankind? I wish I were able to answer that question. We want to help humanity. We fight wars only because we crave peace so ardently. And we pray that each war will be the last. But always in the strange scheme of things, some maniac with a lust for power arises and in one moment destroys the peace and tranquility we've created through the years. We hate war. We despise it. But when war comes, we must and will fight armed and um...